the scalar torsion field generator. First, requirements for the development of the scalar torsion field generator. Second, characteristics of seeds under the influence of the scalar torsion field. Third, product overview. Fourth, setup overview on the demonstration table. Fifth, power performance evaluation. The development of the device was inspired by my current book project, wherein a prototype version is presently operational on my property. Top right. During the testing of a standard spiral pancake coil, I observed uneven growth development contingent upon the specimen's position on the coil. For large-scale or industrial applications, homogeneous development is essential. The pyramid, which replaces the pancake coil, is designed according to the golden ratio, the foundation of the Fibonacci series. This design introduces a third dimension to the pancake coil, resulting in an increase in voltage from the rim to the center. The asymmetrical flat top load now serves as the location for placing biological specimens or positioning an animal or human between the transmitter and receiver of two sets of scalar torsion field generators, which constitute the minimum requirement for a functional system. For information transfer, the use of a third set is recommended. However, in my demonstration, I will illustrate that this may not be necessary. In my technical research paper presented at the Electrical Engineering Conference in 2019, I examined the growth rate of seeds under the influence of scalar waves, specifically focusing on the transmission of information. The experiment is detailed in Constantine Mayo's Documentation on Scalar Waves, Volumes 1 and 2. During my experiments, I observed that the position of the seed on the spiral coil resulted in uneven growth, a phenomenon not previously documented. It is logical that the voltage on the spiral coil increases from the rim to the center. As demonstrated, the position of the seeds significantly influences their growth rate, with those nearer to the center exhibiting greater growth. The proposed solution is an asymmetrical capacitor top load. I was astonished by the effect, radicals growing up with the same size. The device comprises of two components, the base and the top load. The coil on the base is mounted on a pyramid adhering to the proportions of the golden ratio. The coil is secured in place by 15 layers of shellac, which enhance both positioning and dielectric strength. The top load consists of two layers of planes, one positioned on the top and the other on the bottom, interconnected via a variable capacitor. The white marking indicates the location for placing biological specimens. The electrical connections follow the standard configuration of a partnered coil setup. The fabrication time for one set is approximately one week. The left component is the transmitting coil, while the right component is the receiving coil. The current is measured through the capacitive load. The digital multimeters, DMMS, record the direct current, DC, voltage output. The initial frequency corresponds to the mutual resonance frequency. The power output is less than 50% of the potential output from the signal generator, excluding the power consumption of the LED load. The power is low due to the out-of-phase relationship between current and voltage on the in-transmitting and receiving side. Proceed with the evaluation of the power performance of the scalar torsion field generator. So starting where I left it off from the overview of the demonstration table, I 
adjusted the frequency to 930 kilohertz. We can see we have the LED illuminated um, 12.79 volt on the receiving side and we measure 4 volt here on the transmitting side. We have 50 ohm output from the oscilloscope. We see 1.5 volt and here you see sinus 5 ohm. If I go up now in the frequency, the next one would be the one which would be suitable for this setup, which is around 1200. However, important if the system would be used for energy hard harvesting, you see here we can get 92 volt out stored on the capacitor via the bridge rectifier. However, as you can see here, we are out of phase and the power calculation is taking that into account on the oscilloscope, meaning we have only 12 milliwatt out of here, out of the potential 22 milliwatt which can go into the system when the impedance matches the output impedance from this signal generator. However, this might not be the case. So then I go higher up in frequency, that's a standard process to find harmonics, to find other values, but going higher up means also that our our reactance of the primary coil will increase. That also means we cannot deliver so well energy anymore and will be definitely out of impedance matching to the 50 ohm we have here. I normally would not use a class E amplifier to do impedance match so that I can deliver more power again to the system because I would have to compensate for that. However, if we go up in the frequency we have not done that yet. We go up in the frequency. It's just as a standard process for me. How well the system performs. Over 3 megahertz. Something happens and you see only one blue line. So what is going on? Where is our voltage line? Well, the voltage line is there, but it's 100% Face matched to the current. So if I have it at here at 3.5, 3 .5, uh, 3.5, 6 megahertz, I measure 50 milliwatt. So that's over twice as much as the signal generator from the oscilloscope can produce via 1.5 volt peak to peak or 1 volt RMS into. 50 ohm. We have the LED illuminated, yes, but the LED is a load. And as, I'm, as you remember when you watched the presentation in this video before, I measure only the power we are getting into the capacitor. So what I can do is because at the moment I share the power consumption here on the transmitting at the receiving side, I take off now the chamber for the LEDs, that means the load will not be available. That means I have more energy available for the capacitor, the energy which is provided to the transmitting side, to the receiving side, sorry. I take off the jumper now and retune. Look at the oscilloscope. I will retune. And that is amazing. First of all, let's put it back in position. We have a perfect match in the phase, or almost perfect. I have 130 milliwatt on the output now. I measure 25 volt now on the stored capacitor via the bridge rectifier. And this is Yes, more than six times the output, the so one volt RMS from the signal channel can generate. And we are here in phase 
let's say it is one or two percent out of phase, but that is taken into account from the calculation point of view because the phase angle between voltage and current is calculated accurately in RMS on the oscilloscope. If it's out of phase, we have completely only apparent power. If it's in phase, it's real power. So at that stage, as I mentioned before, we have the phase of voltage both in sync. They're not out of sync anymore. That means I can use now my my capacitor plates I've used for bioelectric probes. I don't need a third set where I can align them. Then these two sets, for example, as my receiving side and would have a third set as a transmitting side. That is not required. I can use only two, I can use only two sets can put my probes, my seeds, or whatever I want to do, my healing practice, I can put it up in between. I have a perfect way to do that in this way with this design I have created. So this was a brief overview. There's much more to come. I will uh, document that all in my upcoming book. I will also provide some information for my members about this product. I'm talking about VNA analysis of um, the systems for the impedance and so on. We are looking at harmonics and so on via spectrum analysis. These are only some of the details I want to provide in the near future. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next time. Goodbye.